Hello, I'm Jane Rigby. I'm an astronomer, and my research studies the evolution of galaxies and black holes over the 13 billion year history of the universe. But today, I want to tell you about some recent history that I had the privilege to be involved with through my professional service to the American Astronomical Society, which honored Frank at our annual meeting in January 2012 at the Ameri at, uh, in Austin, Texas. So who was Frank Kameny? Frank Kameny was a man who got fired, he got angry, and he changed the world. He is the most famous astronomer that most astronomers have never heard of. He started out as an astronomer at Harvard, I'll talk about it in more detail, was hired by the government to be an astronomer and quickly fired. Um, after his firing, he started a career of 50 years as an activist. Uh, and in the process changed our society, our government, and the workplace that many of us enjoy. And so Frank's story is a story of science and scandal, of struggle and eventual vindication in late in life. Frank Kameny served in World War II in the front lines. Uh, he was a mortarman uh, in the infantry. He saw frontline combat in Europe. Afterward, he served as a translator in occupied Europe, was honorably discharged, came home, and finished a, a college degree in physics. And then he went to what at the time was the best place in the United States to study astronomy, the Harvard College Observatory. And he studied astronomy and got his Ph.D. from Harvard in 1956. He then taught at Georgetown for a few semesters, and then was hired as a civil servant astronomer at the Army Map Service in 1957. Now, 1957 is on the cusp of the revolution in astronomy, right? It's just before the transition from ground-based telescopes at a few isolated mountain observatories that only a few people have access to, looking at the kinds of light that you can see with your eye, to an era that we have today in which there are space telescopes covering the ultraviolet, infrared, optical, x-ray, gamma ray skies in which we have these sensitive beautiful telescopes in space and on the ground and just this revolution in 20th century and 21st century astrophysics. And so in 1957 Frank Kameny has the degree and the connections to be at the forefront of that research. But that's not how the story turns out. Instead, in 1957, at age 32, Frank Kameny had his accident, which was the, to his career, fatal accident of being found out to be gay in the 1950s. Now, to understand what that meant and why that meant that Frank could never practice astronomy again, you have to think back to what the world was like for gay people in the 50s. Homosexuality was a crime or considered to be so. Gays were banned from the government and from military service and from basically all aspects of the public sphere. Um, they lived in fear and when they were caught they, as you can see, were ashamed and trying to hide their identities to protect their jobs. The only place that gay people in the 50s could really safely congregate were bars. Those were illegal because Gay people were illegal, so places where they congregate were assumed to be dens of criminals. And so the bars were subject to frequent police um, raids, brutality, and entrapment. And so this happened frequently. We can look to Washington, D.C., to the Evening Star, um, to this article from 1962, which was in Frank Kameny's uh, uh, file clippings. Um, in which 65 people were arrested in Fairfax, Virginia. And the part I want to point out is this line uh, on the second column, many of those arrested were, bus were business and professional men with families, among them a minister, a physician, four teachers, military personnel, and a real estate executive. The article goes on to say that the teachers' school districts were notified. And so these are careers that were ruined. Um, in which people were seeking out the only place that they could congregate and seek romantic affection and um, were arrested and fired from their jobs as a result. 
So that's the era in which Frank Kameny finds himself getting his PhD from Harvard. Um, and so the reason he was fired in 1957 is that the Army Map Service found out that he was gay. And as you can see from this uh, um, application for a new job, he was only employed from September to December. And he could not get a new job because um, in every next job, he has to answer yes to these two questions. Have you ever been fired from the United States government? Yes. Have you ever been barred from the government employment? Yes. And so that arrest and being fired by the Army Map Service basically prevents him from getting any other job. And in the Kameny Papers, which are uh, uh, part of uh, the Library of Congress, there's a lot of letters like this, applications for new jobs in astronomy, and this, which is a rejection letter from NASA from 1959. NASA is brand new at this point. It was just founded in 1958, and they're hiring people. And the letter, um, as you can see, there's not even the famous NASA meatball logo yet. And basically the letter says that um, we're hiring all kinds of people and we really don't need you. Thank you for your interest. And so at a time when NASA was growing rapidly and astronomy was, was about to go through this revolution, Frank Kameny has, um, is highly trained in a profession that he is no longer welcome in because they found out that he's gay. And so what does he do next? Um, this happened all the time. This was frequent. Um, and what is unusual is not that Frank was fired for being gay, but what happened next, which is that he fought his dismissal. And so he wrote letters. It started out very simply. He wrote letters to protest his firing to the Secretary of Defense, to the Army Map Service, um, and to the U.S. Civil Service Commission, which um, was like the personnel management for the government. And so he starts out just saying, I think I've been mistreated, I shouldn't have been fired, um, I'm, a, you know, I'm no security risk. And then he starts writing even more letters and he ends up petitioning to the Supreme Court in, uh, for um, a writ of, of certiorari that, uh, to take the case. And of course the Supreme Court doesn't take the case, right? The Supreme Court takes almost no cases. But still, this is one of the very first cases in which a gay person in the United States stands up and petitions the government for a redress of grievances and in particular um, protests the discrimination toward him on the basis of his sexual orientation. He starts writing more letters and some of these replies back really show what the 1950s were like. I think this one in particular um, a letter from the Department of State which basically says um, the part uh, right at the fold because of the prevailing mores of our society, the homosexual frequently becomes a disruptive personnel factor within any organization. And so that's the attitude. And Kameny keeps writing those letters to try to change people's minds. But he also starts acting as an advisor or a counselor to other people who are in the same boat, other employees of the government or the military service who are facing dismissal on charges of being gay. And so the Library of Congress Kameny papers have folders for 242 individual people who sought help from Frank Kameny, which really shows you that this, is a, this was a common thing that happened at the time. Here's another one of these letters um, from the U.S. Civil Service Commission, and uh, let's see, um, that homosexuals or sexual perverts are not suitable for federal employment. So that was the attitude that Frank Kameny was facing. And he was strong enough, or maybe arrogant enough, to conclude that his moral compass said that he was right and that the U.S. government and society were wrong and therefore he was going to go change the U.S. government and society's opinion on this matter. And so in 1965, Frank Kameny and other members of the Mattachine Society organize a picket of the White House to protest the ban on gays in the civil service. This is one of the first LGBT protests where LGBT is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. This is one of the first LGBT protests in the United States. And Kameny described it as 10 nervous, anxious people 
demonstrated for one hour in the late afternoon. This is one of the later protests from that year. They protested the White House three times in 1965 and also protested the U.S. Civil Service Commission, the Pentagon, and they started an annual protest of Independence Hall, which they continued for several years on July 4th. And so this is really amazing for this time, for gay people to stand up, first of all, and acknowledge that they were gay, and petition the government for a redress of grievances. This is just really astonishing for the time. And I think you can see that in this picture. Um, look at the face of the gentleman in front here. His sign says, U.S. Homosexuals Protest Federal Treatment. Um, I think you can really see the fear uh, and resolution in his face. Also standing behind him is Frank Kameny, and I believe behind him is Barbara Giddings, one of the other organizers. And so, not only is Frank writing letters and protesting, but he starts questioning what lies behind these policies, why they are the way they are. And what he concludes is that the psychiatrists have classified homosexuality as a mental illness. And so if he wants to change society, he's got to change that. And so as a scientist, Frank says, all right, I don't feel particularly mentally ill. What's the evidence that I am? What's the evidence that gay people are mentally ill? And so he starts diving into this, and he starts realizing that there really is no evidence. And he starts uh, networking with other people, especially, other psychi especially psychiatrists, who feel the same way. And I think this is where Frank's scientific training is really important to recall. Remember, he has a PhD in astronomy. He's used to dealing with data and evidence. And so he says, I looked at whatever research there was as a scientist by training, and what I found was absolutely appalling. Slovenly, slipshod, sleazy reasoning in scientific work, moralistic and theological value judgments cloaked in the language of substance, of language of science, but with none of the substance of science. And so I think you can see the anger there and the professional pride of someone who takes data and evidence very seriously, looking at the psychiatrist and saying, you know, where's your data? It, it's, this isn't data, this is prejudice. And this comes out again in his communications with the head of the committee that was deciding um, how to classify homosexuality, if it was part of normal human behavior or if it was a psychosis. And in this letter, Kameny asks, I challenge you to provide even a shred of scientifically meaningful or scientifically valid support for your statement that homosexuality represents less than op optimal functioning. I defy you to do so. So you can see some of the indignation that Kameny is taking to this subject. And it starts paying off. In 1972, Kameny and several others uh, testified at the annual meeting of the American Psychi Psychiatric Association. And they testified that they believed the APA had wrongly classified homosexuality. At the left is a psychiatrist who also testified who had to wear a mask to protect his identity really shows you what the attitudes were like at the time, that he was fearful for his employment um, if he testified openly. And of course, Kameny is out in the open um, fighting um, for a change of policy. And so the next year, in 1973, uh, the APA decided to vote on whether or not homosexuality should be listed in the, the DSM um, as a mental illness. And so the vote was um, that it was not a mental illness, and so Kameny sends out this uh, very arch letter uh, with the subject line, Victory, we have been cured. The, ti the uh, Time wrote an article in which it said that, wow, millions of people have been cured of a mental illness in, in just a, in by popular vote, by a vote of the psychiatrists. It's a little bit funny, but it's hard to overstate how important this was. Kameny believed, with cause, that this diagnosis of mental illness was one of the key things that was holding back um, gay and lesbians from being recognized and accepted as part of society. And so he fought that ban as being based on prejudice rather than science, and got the scientists themselves to agree that he was right. It's hard to overstate how important that was. 
At the same APA meeting, Frank Kameny got the, the APA to put out a position statement arguing that uh, gay people um, should not be discriminated against because of their sexual orientation. And for 1973, this was a really revolutionary statement. And so his protest of the government ban on hiring homosexuals, his petitions to the APA to change their policy, show Frank Kameny as an activist who had a scientist's mind and was using that his analytic training um, to figure out how to change society and policy. Frank also was involved in many other battles. Um, he was key to um, um, he had a personal interest in the ban on uh, homosexuals from serving in government, in the federal government. That policy changed in 1975 when the U.S. Civil Service Commission changed their rules. Frank Kameny likes to, like to say that the U.S. Civil Service Commission um, uh, resigned to him or surrendered to him in 1975. And so that was key. After that, before that, there was a blanket ban on, uh, on employment. After that, it was a case-by-case -case basis whether someone could be hired or retained. So there was no so that's better, but still kind of a queasy situation as an employee to face. In 1998, by executive order, uh, came a ban on discrimination in the civil service, such that we went from it being well maybe it's okay, maybe not on a case by case basis, to having uh, a blanket non discrimination statement uh, against sexual orientation being used um, um, for promotion and hiring in the civil service. Um, a few years earlier came the ban on security clearances by executive order in 1995. In 2009, we get to the maybe the end of this chapter um, in which the government apologized to Frank Kameny for having fired him for being gay. I'll talk about that in a minute. And in 2010, of course, came the end of the ban on military service, don't ask, don't tell. And so in 2009, uh, OPM, the Office of Personnel Management, which is the new U.S. Civil Service Commission, um, its director, John Barry, formally apologized to Frank Kameny uh, for the government having fired him back in 1957. And uh, Barry's apology was given on behalf of the U.S. government. And so part of that apology letter are worth uh, pulling out here. I am writing to advise you that this policy, which was at odds with the bedrock principles underlying the merit-based civil service, has been repudiated by the United States government, due in large part to your determination in life's work and to the thousands of Americans whose advocacy your words inspired. Also in 2009, the president signed an executive order that opened some fringe benefits, although notably not health insurance, to the partners of federal workers. And after he signed the executive order, he handed the pen to Frank Kameny. In 2010 came the signing of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and the end of the ban went into place later the next year. And so with dignitaries crowding around the president signing the bill, you can then look to the third row um, of the audience and you can see Frank Kameny there in the middle watching the ban. This was very important to Frank. He was indignant that during the Second World War he had had to lie about his homosexuality in order to fight the Nazis. And so at the, uh, a lot of prominent people were at the repeal, including not only Frank Kameny, but the, uh, the head of NASA, Charlie Bolden, um, who was rather emphatic that he was pretty happy to see this nightmare, don't ask, don't tell, uh, finally end. Frank Kameny died in October of 2011. There was a memorial service for him at the U.S. Capitol shortly after, attended by Representatives Barney Frank, Tammy Baldwin, as well as Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton, and the head of OPM, John Barry. And I think John Barry sums it up for um, those of us who are gay, um, that it was in large part um, and certainly for people who are gay and working in the federal government, that it was because of Frank Kameny that they were able to pursue their careers and allowed to be hired and promoted. Frank Kameny will be interred in the Congressional Cemetery in Washington, D.C. 
Um, he has two stones. One is a, uh, a headstone for his service in World War II in Germany. And the other is a slogan that he coined, Gay is Good, which he wrote, uh, he liked, uh, he wrote because it was along the lines of Black is Beautiful, that it was a positive statement. And that he wrote that statement at a time when almost nobody believed that gay was good. Um, and Frank Kameny was someone who did believe. And this is a very small thing, but it's the last thing, and it's how I got involved in the story of Frank Kameny. The American Astronomical Society honored Frank Kameny at the 2012 annual meeting of the Society um, in recognition of his lifelong activism, his commitment to diversity and equality. Um, it was sadly a posthumous award. It had been in the works for some time, and it just didn't get approved um, soon enough um, while Frank was still alive. Um, I want to call out one part of the award, which is that Dr. Kameny's activism removed discriminatory barriers that had cut short many careers. I think it's worth noting that for the scientists um, and other professionals who we can name, like Frank Kameny, that we know lost their careers due to discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, there are many others that we don't. Um, and so this was sadly posthumous. Um, but I think it was still really important, both for the society to become better educated, for the members about who Frank Kameny was and what his contributions were, and that had, he had been an astronomer. And I think, um, I know that his friend Charles Francis said that it, he feels that, that Frank would have really been honored to have his former profession uh, acknowledge him and thank him for his activism. And so that's the president at right of the AAS announcing the award, Debbie Elbergreen. And then to her left is Charles Francis, the head of the Kameny Papers Project, who gave a fantastic short speech that you can find uh, on the Huffington Post under Kameny um, and Charles Francis. Just Google it. And then at the left there are uh, a couple of us um, gay astronomers who were just were there to be a witness. And so the crowd gave a standing ovation for awarding Frank this prize. I think it was very meaningful for the membership and very educational. Um, there was also a lot of progress at the meeting in terms of LGBT equality. Uh, for the first time, the American Astronomical Society has an official working group on LGBT equality. That For the first time, there's a voice for LGBT people within our professional society uh, to discuss our concerns, to network, to deal with the discrimination and um, unequal treatment that many of us face. And so that's a really big deal. And the vignette I would pull out from that and share is that at our networking dinner, which has existed for years, but because of this official recognition, it was included in the official program for the first time. And at the networking dinner, I met uh, several grad several uh, students that I didn't know, and I said, hi guys, you know, who are you guys? Why are you here? And they were undergraduates, and they had read about the networking dinner in the official program and decided to go. And they spent the evening talking and networking and talking to their peers as well as to more senior astronomers. And it was an amazing experience that finally... Um, we are able to discuss uh, the concerns of, um, of our minority group within the larger professional society. So I don't want to end this talk on too sugar-coated a note, um, and I don't want to let you think that since Frank got an award from the American Astronomical Society, everything is all hunky-dory. Um, Frank Kameny had a vision of equal citizenship for gay people. And that vision is not yet reality. We all know that. Um, gay children are still bullied to suicide. Uh, the federal government does not recognize our families, and so as a result, we pay higher taxes and we get fewer services. And gay federal employees cannot cover spouses on their health plans. So it's pretty clear that things are not yet equal. But we really have come a long way. Uh, that uh, picture is taken when Frank was donating his picket signs from the 1965 White House protest to the Smithsonian. Um, they are in the Smithsonian as examples of um, American protest um, over the last several hundred years of the Republic. Um, and I want to, you know, that's a statement of how within Frank's lifetime his contributions were recognized. 
Also, Frank was successful in most of his battles. He changed federal policy. He changed uh, the treatment of, of gay people um, in the federal workplace, as well as how they were perceived by society. And so, least of these, you know, many of us couldn't have our jobs if Frank Kameny weren't, hadn't lost his. Um, and so, this is a picture I took of myself at the Smithsonian with one of Frank's signs. Uh, I think it kind of sums up how many of us feel. Um, and so, um, and so that's, uh, 